Super Bowl 54 is coming up really soon, this Sunday to be exact, and I think it's going to be one of the better matchups of the past 20 years. Each team is entering the game with their own set of unique skills and talents. The Kansas City Chiefs have a solid defense, but they also have possibly the best offense in the league. Or at least they have an offense that produces nothing short of multiple highlights week in and week out. This team will compete against the San Francisco 49ers, a team with a defense filled with grit and determination, along with a great offense. However, when you look at that offense, you notice something unique about it. Besides the young star quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, the star talent within this team lies in positions that the rest of the NFL would deem outdated or unnecessary. I'm talking about the running back and tight end positions. First, let's look at the running backs, a position that has fallen out of favor in the NFL in recent years due to the rise and expansion of the wide receiver position. It's not easy to find a running back that can do everything like rushing plays, running routes, and making blocks for the quarterback. It's not easy for running backs to stay in for all three downs, so many teams try to incorporate multiple running backs that are designed to take part in a specific type of play. San Francisco has one of the best trios in the league for this specific purpose, a trio that excels at every facet of the running back position, but no superstars. That brings us to the tight end position, a position that has not necessarily been devalued, but has evolved immensely over the years. At one time, before football became pass-oriented, the tight end's objective was to knock defenders to the ground with an occasional red zone target every now and again. Now, as the game has gotten faster and athleticism is through the roof, the tight end position has evolved into a bigger receiver who can hold their own against a defender, but may not completely overpower the stronger defender. This evolution has brought us many great tight ends over the years like Tony Gonzalez, Antonio Gates, and Rob Gronkowski. Today's modern crop of tight ends are faster and more athletic than ever. One of those guys is the star of the 49ers offense, and that man is George Kittle. Today I want to talk about the rise of George Kittle and how the evolution of the tight end position has been incorporated into the modern game of football. Let's get into it. To really grasp the effectiveness of George Kittle and his role in the evolution of the tight end position, we need to look at the history of the tight end position. In the 1940s and 50s, the position was created to give players who were defensive liabilities a second chance mainly players who were skilled at catching the ball. Before the emergence of stars like Mike Ditka and John Mackey, teams used the tight end position as essentially a sixth offensive lineman, rarely ever running receiving routes. This was in the 1960s. Everything changed in 1980 with the emergence of Kellen Winslow. As part of the famous Air Coriel offense, or the vertical offense, Winslow was a cornerstone of one of the greatest offenses in NFL history. This scheme introduced a wider variety of receiving routes for the tight end, unlike previous years where the routes given to the tight end were limited to short and medium drag routes. However, the visionary behind this vertical offense, Don Coriel, used different tactics to allow Winslow to be covered by an outmatched defender. Winslow was the first of his kind at the position. Former Chargers assistant coach Al Saunders said Winslow was a wide receiver in an offensive lineman's body. Coriel knew that Winslow could easily outmatch a defender with his deceptive athleticism, so he would either motion Winslow to get avoid being jammed at the line of scrimmage, line up Winslow out wide like a receiver, or in the slot against a smaller cornerback. Needless to say, this offensive philosophy gained notoriety across the league as it would revolutionize the way that coaches viewed the tight end position and offenses as a whole. While Winslow wasn't at the top for that long, his impact on the game of football is well recognized in the history books. This leads us to the 1990s with a similar crop of tight ends, or descendants of Kellen Winslow. Shannon Sharp was the first tight end to really be treated like an elite receiver as he was constantly facing double coverage, and this was for good reason. Over his 14 year career, he became the first tight end in NFL history to reach 10,000 receiving yards as well as totaling 62 touchdowns and 12 points three yards per carry. That leads us to a couple of the greats, Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates. These two guys were known as being staples of their respective teams, division rivals no less. Gates may have gotten the all-time touchdown record at the position, but Gonzalez crushes the competition in total receiving yards and total receptions. All in all, these are two of the all-time greats at the position, who will continue to be revered as football's history continues to be written. 
That leads us to the 2010s, where there is no shortage of valuable tight ends. Of course, it starts with Rob Gronkowski. Gronk brought something that football fans hadn't really seen at the tight end position. The elite combination of height, athleticism, catching ability, and blocking ability. Stood at 6 feet 6 inches tall, Gronk towered over defenders. His route running ability and athleticism made any matchup a mismatch in Gronk's favor. Despite his early retirement, he is still regarded as a great at the position and should be in the Hall of Fame at some point. This past decade also saw many tight ends cut from a similar cloth in terms of receiving ability. Players like Jimmy Graham, Greg Olson, Travis Kelsey, Vernon Davis, Jason Witten, and a few other guys I haven't mentioned. The point is that at one time in history, the tight end position was nothing more than an extra offensive lineman who ran a route every once in a while. Now, they can be a critical element of a team's offensive success. And that finally leads us to George Kittle. George Kittle is following in the footsteps of his predecessors while also expanding the role of the tight end. Kittle spent four years at the University of Iowa and didn't become a featured part of the offense until his junior year. As a result, he wasn't a highly ranked prospect heading into the 2017 NFL Draft, so he was taken in the fifth round by the San Francisco 49ers. On May 4th, 2017, the San Francisco 49ers signed Kittle to a four-year, $2.69 million contract. Now, he has created immense value for the 49ers offense. He was decent his rookie year, but he really took off in 2018. In fact, it is one of the greatest seasons by a tight end ever. Kittle broke Travis Kelsey's single season receiving yards record for a tight end, less than an hour after Kelsey broke the record. Kittle finished the season with 1,377 receiving yards. He also posted an absurd 15.6 yards per carry, along with 10.2 yards after catch, which just displays his incredible athletic ability for a tight end. In fact, he was the first tight end ever to lead the league in yards after catch, with 870. The way that he can elude a defender's tackle Tackle, while simultaneously breaking the tackle is something you don't see often from a wide receiver, let alone a tight end. His 2019 season had the potential to be even better than his 2018 season, as after the first four weeks of the season, Kittle earned the highest overall pro football focus grade of any player in the NFL. At one point, he was putting together the highest graded season by a tight end in the PFF era. Later in the season, he suffered a knee injury that caused him to miss two games. Despite missing these games, his numbers are strikingly similar to his 2018 season. Kittle was incredibly efficient as he caught 85 of 86 catchable targets. He had the 6th highest catch rate of any player with at least 100 total targets and his 3.1 yards per route were the most in the league, wideouts and running backs included. He also broke the record for most receiving yards by a tight end during their first three years of their career by over 200 yards, a record that stood for almost 60 years. He may not have played the full season, but that doesn't take away from his incredible offensive ability. This is not to understate his run blocking ability, probably the most underappreciated part of Kittle's game and what ultimately makes him the complete tight end. This is what sets him apart from his positional adversaries. In a time when offenses are more pass oriented than ever, the value of a blocking tight end is diminishing as there are less three down running backs. As the 49ers run a more than capable three man running back unit that is integral to their offensive success, Kittle's blocking ability makes up a sizable chunk of that running unit success. In college, Kittle was attributed as a blocking tight end. Special teams and tight ends coach at the University of Iowa, LeVar Woods, said he loves to pancake people. He loves to be physical. When he does get the ball in his hands, he is looking to punish somebody. Kittle's success reveals an interesting conundrum for NFL scouts. The role of the tight end in college football is getting larger every season as pass catching tight ends are becoming the norm. However, this leads to the problem that tight ends may again be becoming one dimensional. At one point, tight ends were only known for their blocking ability rather than their receiving ability. Now it's the opposite. So as pass catching tight end prospects become the norm, a tight end that can catch passes while providing exceptional blocking skills is as rare as ever. I gotta be honest, I didn't talk about George Kittle as much as I thought I would. But to be fair, he has only been in the league for a few seasons. His emergence as arguably the top tight end in the league is astounding to me. I did not know who this guy was in 2018, and now in 2020, he is among the top players in the league. 
his role in the continuing evolution of the tight end position gets me excited too. As I grew up watching Antonio Gates clawing his way to the top of his position, it's great to see more and more players in that position evolve from their predecessors. Kittle is only just ending his third season. If anything, durability will be the main factor in how Kittle's career turns out. He clearly has the tools and ability to be one of the great tight ends and hold an even more integral role in the evolution and future of the tight end position. We're just gonna have to wait and see how his career plays out. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.